so let's get started as I see that we're going to have some more people be joining. Um, but I see that we have a group, good group right now. Um, I want to introduce myself. My name is Kimberly and I'm the academic advisor at Hospitality Academy. And I'm thrilled that you have joined us today um, on our Instagram live all around the world, as we can see. I'm very excited to share with you some valuable tips and insights that will help create a winning CV uh, to imp impress your potential employers. So let me first start by asking you a question. Have you ever applied for a job and felt like your resume was just lost in the pile? I have. It's frustrating, right? But the good news is that there are some simple things you can do to make your resume stand out and be noticed. And that's exactly what we're going to be discussing today. So before we begin, um, if you have any questions or comments, you can share them in the chat and we'll be answering them um, towards the end of the session. So it could be about specifics, um, about anything that I speak about or maybe something specific um, to your, your current CV. So um, let's get started. So whether you're just starting out in your career or you're looking to take the next step, this workshop is for you. We'll cover everything on how to structure your CV to the best ways to highlight your skills and experience. We'll also give you some in insider tips on what employers are looking for and how to make sure your resume ticks all the boxes. So to begin, we will provide you with some general tips for your CV. Subsequently, we will also offer specific CV advice tailored to help you secure positions within the luxury hospitality industry in properties such as the Four Seasons, the Ritz-Carlton, and many more. And for a bonus, we also have some do's and don'ts for the US specific CVs, which will work very, very interesting. So the first thing you need to do is make sure that your CV is clear, concise, and easy to read. Remember, recruiters and hiring managers are busy people and they don't have time to sift through pages and pages of information. So that's why it's important to keep your resume to no more than two pages and use bullet points to break up the text. It's also very important to create a headline that grabs the attention. Your headline is the first thing potential employers will see. So you need to make sure that it's attention grabbing and relevant to the job you're applying for. My suggestion is to use keywords that match the job description and highlight your most impressive achievements or skills. Third, don't forget to craft a compelling narrative about yourself in the summary section. In the summary section, this is your chance to showcase your personality and give potential employers a sense of who you are as a person. Because this is just one piece of paper, you're not able you know, to, to speak about your experiences and who you are. So your summary section is very important. And I suggest that you use this section to highlight your strengths, your passions, and your unique selling points. Next. Make sure you tailor your resume to the specific job you're applying for. This is so important. This means researching the company and the role and customizing your CV to highlight the skills and experience that are most relevant. So what does this mean? Do not send the same generic resume to every job you apply for. Please take the time to make it specific, specific and targeted. Next, your education section. It might not really involve a lot of writing. However, it is crucial for your CV success. You should include the type of degree, your major or minor, the name of the school, and your graduation date. Um, for example, a Bachelor in Arts in Hospitality Management at Penn State University, graduation date 2015. This is very, just very simple and clear. You don't have to write what your courses were, what you studied, just your degree name. Um, also, if you're currently studying, this is also important to add that degree, but you should always note that you're currently enrolled in, in that specific program. 
And finally, make sure you include measurable achievements in your CV. Employers want to see evidence of your success, so include numbers and statistics to show how you've contributed to, to previous roles. So for example, instead of just saying or writing you've increased sales, say you increased sales by 20% in six months. This will allow the employer to see your concrete accomplishments. So that was just a, bit, a few tips about uh, how to make your CV successful. So what about a CV for the US job market? American resumes may have extra requirements that can mean the difference between getting hired or getting your resume tossed without a second look. So American resumes always almost use a, re a reverse chronological resume format. So you're thinking, what does that mean? This resume layout highlights the most recent uh, work experience first then moves backwards in a re reverse chronological order through your employment history. So your most recent job to your least recent job, maybe in high school or whatever. Um, this is also very important to note if you have many different job experiences. The American resume style always includes information about your education, your career objectives and skill set, but the work experience is the priority feature. So I mentioned earlier about having your CV um, not lot, a lot of pages, right? Um, so how many pages should your CV be? Um, I would like to note that many different countries have different requirements on the page count of the CV. So depending where you were applying for your job, um, you would just have to make sure to research a little bit about that. However, most American hiring managers are looking for one page CVs. So if your CV is longer than a page, my advice is to try to stick with the most relevant and recent uh, work experience that pertains to the specific job. So for example, if you worked at an ice cream shop while you were in high school, um, like myself, do you think that is relevant when applying for a front desk position? Hmm, probably not. However, your part-time job uh, in your home country as an office assistant could use similar skills as the job you're applying for. So my recommendation would be to, to add, make sure to have the part-time office job and not you know, uh, your job at the ice cream parlor. So we've spoken a little bit about what to include in your CV, but what are some things to avoid in your CV for US specific jobs? U.S. companies have to follow strict laws when it comes to hiring. So it is essential that you understand the information, what you can include in your resume and what details you should leave out. So um, I'd like to preface this. It honestly depends uh, what company you're applying for, but this is just a general um, suggestion. Uh, so firstly, it is not important to include your full address on your resume because this can cause privacy concerns in the United States. However, you can include your current city, state, and country. That is completely okay. Also, it is not necessary to include personal details about yourself. This may include your marital status, your ethnicity, or even your spiritual beliefs. If you're applying for a job in the United States and you live outside of the United States, um, it is recommended that you include your nationality, and that's completely okay. And lastly, um, we also don't recommend adding your professional references to your CV. So you might be asking, well, they might ask for it anyways. Your CV is about you, right? Um, although um, your employer might, or the you know, potential employer might ask for them, this is a separate document in which you can provide. Always have those ready and on hand. And when you, when you possibly are applying for the position or um, you know, submitting your resume, you can send that separately. But your CV should just be about your experience um, and then the, the, the personal references on the side. Okay, so before we delve into the essential tips for the luxury hospitality industry, remember, it's important to be aware of the certain uh, considerations when you craft your resume for US jobs um, and for jobs around the world. 
So next, I will present to you with invaluable CV tips tailored specifically for landing your dream job in the prestigious sector of luxury hospitality. So let's see, elevate your expertise. Um, some of these are just uh, reiterations of what I explained, but this is specifically, again, for the luxury uh, hospitality industry. So tailor your CV to showcase your experience in the luxury hospitality industry. This means to highlight your skills, your qualifications, and your experiences that demonstrate your ability to provide impeccable service and create unforgettable moments for the discerning guests. This is very important. Next, showcase your prestigious experience. This is different than any other experience of the office job or the ice cream parlor or whatever it may be, right? This is specifically talking about your experience in the luxury properties. And um, so emphasize your previous roles in the luxury establishments, details your responsibilities, your achievements, and your notable contributions <clears throat> that highlight your commitment to delivering excellence. Next, master the art of communication. Fluency in multiple languages is highly valued in the luxury hospitality industry. Highlight your language skills, especially those spoken by international clientele, to demonstrate your ability to connect and cater to diverse guests. This is so important because um, your, uh, if you are fluent in, in three different languages, make sure that is on your, your CV because that's, that's a very big standout. Next, demonstrate passion for luxury. Showcase your genuine passion and deep understanding of the luxury market. Include relevant certifications, specialized trainings, and courses that exemplify the knowledge of the industry and its unique demands. Next, uh, exemplify exceptional soft skills. So beyond technical abilities, emphasize your exceptional soft skills. And what, what are soft skills? Like your communication, your problem solving, um, and maybe your redefined demeanor. <clears throat> These qualities are essential for providing personalized and attentive service in the luxury hospitality sector. Exceed guest expectations. Highlight your track record of creating extraordinary guest experiences. Showcase instances where you've exceeded expectations, maybe you've managed VIP requests, and left a lasting impression on discerning clients. Impeccable attention to detail. Attention to detail is paramount in the luxury hospitality industry. Showcase instances where you have demonstrated meticulousness, whether it be managing the VIP requirements, maintaining cleanliness, or ensuring flawless presentation. Leverage industry-specific words. <clears throat> Incorporate relevant industry keywords and terminologies in your CV. This showcases your familiarity with the luxury hospitality sector and enhances your chances of catching the attention of recruiters and automated systems. And last but not least, references that speak volumes. When you are asked, um, provide the references from your previous employers or supervisors who can attest to the skills and your work ethic. Obviously, obtain the permission before um, giving the work um, the reference and provide their contact information to reinforce your credibility. Um, I'm happy to say that these um, luxury tips will be posted on our LinkedIn page. We will also be um, sharing the link in the comments so you're able to, to reference a little bit more um, about these specific CV tips for the luxury industry. So those are my tips and insights. I'm going to take a look right now to see if we have any questions or comments. There's a lot of people, amazing. Mm, okay, give me one moment. Mm. Age, okay, this is a good question. Um, for the, specifically for 
the US uh, job market, it is not uh, recommended to put your age on your CV. However, other countries might have um, different um, requirements, but for the US job market, normally we don't um, recommend to put your age. Um, let's see. We have to change our resume depending on the job. This is recommended because if you use the same generic resume for every job that you apply to um, and you have different skill sets, if you create and curate um, a job that really highlights your skills of being a front desk manager rather than just having management um, experience, the one that really uh, showcases your experience in front desk might okay might uh, stand out a little bit more than just the one that you you know send easily through LinkedIn or or different job um, um, platforms okay so um, my recommendation is to change it and also to you again uh, re reminding everyone that if you're applying for uh, a specific position in your summary, make sure to look at the job description and see what they're looking for so you can really highlight on those skills that they're looking for in your summary section. Great question. One page. So again, this is a recommendation. Um, like I mentioned before, American uh, uh, job or hiring uh, managers don't want to go through so many different pages. Um, it's recommended to have one um, page for a CV if you have two. My main point for that is to make sure that the information on your CV is relevant and recent with not a lot of text. You don't need to necessarily say every single thing that you did in this one position, but just really highlight your accomplishments and the bigger, maybe the bigger job responsibilities within that um, uh, previous position. Okay. And told me employers what? Um, this is an interesting question. I'm not really, I'm not entirely sure. It says a friend told me employers watch our Instagram profile. Is that real? Um, I'm not entirely sure. Again, um, it's possible, but um, again, if it's private or public, that's that's up to you. <laughs> um, how long should be our CV? Again, between one to two pages. Normally American companies look for one page. Can you add a picture? So depending, um, uh, it depends. You should always um, inquire before um, sending your resume if, they, um, if the, the country that you're applying um, in the job to, um, if it's acceptable to you to add um, a, per a picture of yourself or it's not. So depending on the country, um, it depends. Good question. Can we add references to the CV? Again, I would highly recommend to keep your references um, on a separate document and not have them on the CV. Again, um, the CV should, um, you know, uh, recognize your accomplishments, your past history, and then the, the, the personal references or professional references should be, should be on the side. Good question. Is it this is a good question. Is it necessary to add extracurricular activities from high school if I'm in university now? My answer for this would be, if you think that it highlights um, uh, who you are or um, your abilities or maybe your interests, for example, if one of your extracurricular activities was in high school, you were um, on the student body, right, of being the president of the student body for your senior class, for example, I would, I would recommend putting that on your CV because it showcases that even in high school you were you were um, you know inquiring or 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 wanting a high managerial type of roles or you enjoyed um, you know being a part of a team and so forth. Absolutely great. Okay, um, 
again, going back to the picture, this is a really great question. Um, <clears throat> should it be a selfie? Um, if you are applying to a hospitality uh, position, my recommendation is for you to get a professional photo taken. Um, not necessarily meaning that you have to go and pay for it, right? But for you to dress very nicely um, with a wall just like this behind you and have someone take it rather than you, you know, uh, doing it on your phone. Why? Because this shows professionalism, okay? So if you just take a selfie and, you know, put it on uh, your resume, I don't know if the the potential, you know, hospitality um, hiring manager would maybe take that seriously. Rather, if you were standing, someone took the photo of you, you were dressed professionally, that photo would be more enticing for them to continue reading your resume than the selfie. Very good question. Mm. Are there any common mistakes that people make on their CVs that should be avoided? Spelling <laughs> and grammar. Okay, never, one suggestion I would say is you really shouldn't refer uh, to your pronoun, meaning you don't want to say, I completed a, I don't know, I completed um, six different check-ins within two minutes. No, you would say um, within the position, you always want to make sure that you don't say I or we or something like that. Uh, it should just be a general statement. Um, and then again, always make sure to read uh, the, the country requirements or the country um, general tips for, for your resume. Great question. Okay, I think that's it. Great. Okay, so I just want to remind you again that um, we have our CV tips on our, um, on our LinkedIn. Um, so go ahead and check that out. You can be able to download it there. Um, so I just want to thank every, everyone so much uh, to, for joining uh, our CV workshop today. Um, again, Hospitality Academy is here to help you and I hope you enjoyed this live session and you're motivated to create your CV and give it all the necessary updates um, that it needs or you think is, is essential. So I hope you enjoyed today's workshop and you learned some you know, valuable information. Um, so from Hospitality Academy, I, I wish you a great day ahead. Thank you so much, everyone.